like to convey to you, the listener, the viewer, how blessed I feel that you're choosing to listen to this podcast. The only podcast of its kind on the interwebs that I'm aware of for the Quantum Grammar shoot. I'm your host, Colin Jason Ivey Matthew Colin Glass. You may call me Jason. In this podcast, we will look at various topics, or actually I will look at various topics, through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar, the wonderful grammar technology brought to the public in 1988 by the late Colin David Ife and Colin Miller. Full stop. Now, in this particular episode, I would like to talk about, in a specific sense, flag protocols, and in a broader sense, communication skills. This is something that I see people bandying about. Uh... I think perhaps with lack of knowledge. That is my guess as to why I see a lot of errors. And it comes down to communication skills. A lot of people just don't know how to communicate. Now, I like to distill everything down to what they call, I guess, the least common denominator, the simplest form I'm very fond of the Samuel Clemens quote. If you truly understand something or cognize something, and yes, folks, I'm using plain English, simple English babble here, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun to convey what I'm saying, because that's the language that the majority of my audience uses. All right. So that's what Samuel Clemens said. If you truly understand something and have closure on something, then you will be able to convey at least a general rudimentary closure of that subject to a five-year-old. If you cannot simplify it, then you yourself don't understand it. Now, that's cultivating humility. Most folks, from my experience, will not do that. Especially on the, the science pages or whatever on social media, where if you get into people, you know, you start questioning, for example, this, this is just an example, fossils. The sheer um, lack of logic of how a fossil could actually exist. For example, the fossil of a leaf or a jellyfish. How can that possibly happen? The only way you can guess as to how that would happen is to guess, to assume and presume. There are no facts involving how something like that would happen unless those conditions that created that thing, that that shape and design in the rock, is actually able to be duplicated and witnessed. Then you would know the conditions with which that occurred. Until then, it's all theory. Now, I'm talking out you know, I guess what you call the left side of my mouth. I don't know if that's been done or not. I don't know if those conditions have been duplicated in a laboratory, if they've actually created fossils the way they exist now, and they're sure that that's how they happened. But as far as I know, from what I learned in school, from the fiction system, it doesn't make sense to me. Just the same way that the pyramids, you know, we cannot duplicate that with the technology that we have today is as quote unquote advanced as we are, which I don't think we are advanced at all compared to old world architecture, at least in that context. Can't duplicate it. Hasn't been duplicated. Sure. You can do it on a, on a smaller scale, but not to the scale that they were built. So, and it, and All these old world structures were created using horses and buggies. Right. Gotcha. All over Earth. Gotcha. With no airplanes, no cranes, no heavy machinery. Right on. And we can't even do that today. I digress. 
I kind of went off on a little tangent there. But that's the level of closure you should have on, well, stop and correct, that one ought to have on a topic before they start claiming some sort of authority over it or to be a master of it. I have that type of closure on correct sentence structure so I can make claims because I know I can back them up. But I can't make claims about fossils because I don't have closure on how those things exist. I can't prove that the way I can prove correct sentence structure. So that's what happens, I think, with flag protocol. People think they know what it means, but perhaps they don't. And it comes down to communication skills. It really does. Because what is a flag in and of itself? It's a communication tool. That's the whole purpose of a flag, to communicate something. If some individual lands on an island and it appears that no one else is there, or even if it's someone else is there, it doesn't matter, they may take a flag and stick it in the ground and say, okay, I'm claiming this land for this flag. And anyone who rides by in a <laughs> water bus, or whatever you want to call it, a boat, will look and see that flag and say, oh, what's that flag? Oh, that's the flag of so-and-so. Oh, I see, that, that comes under that jurisdiction. So now you're communicating as to what's going on over there. If you're at war, for example, and uh, you're fighting and you're on edge and you're looking around looking for, you know, possible threats, you see a group of people coming flying a white flag, you know that, oh, either they are wanting to parlay, they want to surrender, or they're trying to trick us. Got to be careful. But we're not going to shoot them on sight because they have that white flag. We got to wait for more information to see what's going to happen. It's the same thing with the 1 by 1.9 Title IV grammar flag. When you put that on a document contract postal vessel court venue and give correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, closure to that flag under the flag, right next to the flag, so there's no mistaking what flag it is, you've communicated what jurisdiction that document falls under, so to speak. And if you put that flag in a document and then put a finale on it, now you have communicated that it is no longer the correct sentence structure flag. It's the flag of whatever that finale represents. If it is a spire, then that means whoever is using that flag is declaring war upon you or whomever the document is addressed to or pertains to. It's a communication tool. It's all communication tools. When you walk into a foreign vessel and dry dock, i.e. a courtroom, and you see a flag there with fringe on it and a finale, that's communicating something. At the very least, you know that, oh, what, what is inside the fringe? Whatever that is inside the fringe has been captured. It is no longer the flag itself. It's something else because it's been modified. Just like the grammar. Just like putting adverbs and adjectives in front of other words to modify them. That's what the fringe and the finales do. They modify the flags. Change is modification, modification is perjury, yada, yada, yada. We've heard this before. We've seen this song and dance. So these are communication tools. In just about every video that I do, every long form video that I do, I will put the flag on the video in the upper port side corner. The 1 by 1.9 flag. To show 
what jurisdiction that video falls under. And then I put the fee for freight in the starboard side corner slightly lower than the flag because the flag has to be the first thing, the first thing that is seen. That's why it's where it is. It's the first thing you come to on that doc document and you're looking at it because we read left to right, top to bottom, we, meaning the majority of folks who are listening to this, so therefore that flag has to be the first thing you see. The first thing you see is what takes jurisdiction over what follows. Sort of like the cause. And then at the end of the document, the very, very end, that's where you would have the autograph, the authority. Do you see how this all fits together? This is flag protocol in the context of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. It's communication. You're communicate. Excuse me. You're communicating something. Now, if you see a document where you have a different flag on it, now you've given jurisdiction to something else that has nothing to do with correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Because if you are creating a quantum grammar document, the 1 by 1.9 flag would have to be the first thing that is seen by the reader. The flag, not a finale on top, the flag itself unmodified, not modified. That's why I tell people if you look at Colin Russell hyphen J. Colin Gould's documents over the last few years, you will notice that he modifies the flag. He puts a spire on top of it. That means it's no longer the correct sentence structure flag. And this is another piece of evidence in the continuance of evidence that I have presented that he does not use correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. He uses what I, I guess, affectionately call quantum gobbledygook. And that's evidence of it because he modifies the flag. Sure, he can use grammar with mistakes all over it because it's not correct sentence structure. It's adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. Not only does he modify the flag, he modifies the grammar. He uses adverbs and adjectives. It's that simple, folks. It's a continuance of the evidence. And all you folks over there in the adjective, adjective, pronoun, syntax learning center or whatever you're calling yourselves this month, you have to be aware of this. You have to know this stuff because Russell himself taught this stuff while David Wynn Miller was still alive, while they were still partners, while he was still David's protege, David's underling, David's apprentice, David's student. Russell himself was teaching this. He knows better than anybody flag protocols, probably. I learned a good bulk of what I know about postal mechanics, banking mechanics, and flag mechanics from Russell in those videos. And he hasn't really changed what he said as far as those things go. He's just not talking about it anymore. And he's actually using them, doing the very things he was accusing the fiction system of doing. Now he's doing them. That's why I say he doesn't use correct grammar in any sense of the the. The, the word, the term. He's completely in the fiction. Doing fiction things, which is fine. If he's having success with it and he's happy with it and the people he has following him, if they're happy, if they're having successes and they're bettering themselves in their lives and they're happy in their microcosm, their biosphere, awesome. Awesome. I don't wish anything bad on anybody. As long as they're not hurting me, as long as they're not damaging me, which they have tried to do in the past, I may point out that in the past, I have gotten many, many 
threatening emails and comments from Russell J. Gould's people, his followers, where they not only threaten military tribunals, they threaten physical harm and to arrest me, blah, blah, blah. But it's been a year or two since anything like that has come across uh, my desk. Because I think, all right, I've been doing this for seven plus years. I've been on YouTube. I have never really had any issues publishing what I publish. That should tell you something. How long has Russell's people been communicating? Because again, this is part of the podcast communication. How long have they been communicating to their public, to their people, that I'm not authorized to teach, that I'm wrong leading people, and I'm a thief, and I'm going to get what's coming to me, and I'm going to get the same thing that Mark Lowercase K got, and blah, 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 blah. How long have they been saying this shit? But yet nothing ever happens. I think it's because, as they say, I come correct. I have a thousand videos on my channel pertaining to correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. I don't hide anything. I put it all on the table. All of my knowledge is available for free to you on YouTube. I'm not running a scam because it's all here for free if you want to learn it. Now, if you want me to teach it to you, that's something different. That's in the confidential. That's when you email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and you apply for confidential workshops. That's something different. Everything I teach in the workshops is available on the YouTube channel for free. Period. End of story. And that, folks, has been what's kept me safe, I think, over all these years. It's because I put it all on the table. And more importantly, it's correct. Correct. In the context of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. I.e., I know what I'm talking about and I can prove it. And the proof's on the internet. The proof's on my YouTube channel. The proof's in my offer for anyone to email me, schedule a consultation with me. I provide the venue. And rule one, rule equal, we speak to each other face-to-face on a geometric level playing field of contract communication via video communication. And they can ask me whatever, I, whatever you want to. And I will give you closure on the spot. I can do that. I'm not going to worry about what your knowledge level is. Or I'm not going to tell you that you're too stupid to understand this. It's too complicated for you, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to give you closure. And if I don't have the answer, I'll tell you. Hmm. I don't know that one. It's very easy. And that's why I'm still doing what I'm doing. No matter how much noise other uneducated folks make, no matter how much I'm slandered, it's, I'm still here doing what I'm doing. And I move forward. And it's all about communication. How you communicate. If you're going to communicate and say that you have a solution to a problem. And it's for the people. You're telling everybody, this is for the people, I'm for the people. Bring me forward, I will lead you. I will clean this place up. I have the authority to do this. I've shut down the Supreme Court. I've shut down the government. I'm the boss, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna save everybody, blah, 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 blah. But first, you have to join my Patreon. First, you have to educate and save yourself, and then I can save you. It's like, you got to make up your mind, I think, don't you? Either you're the savior, and you can do what you say you're going to do, or everybody has to save themselves. It, it, it can't be both. Okay? Not in this scenario. 
And no, this is not a logical fallacy. I know some people are going to think that, oh, it's the either or logical fallacy. You're only presenting two solutions. In this particular context, there are only two solutions in that context. Now, in what I present and the way I teach and the style that I use, yes, you become autonomous. You, the student, become autonomous. I teach you. Here's how it works. I teach you what I know. I teach you the correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, and mechanics, and it's up to you to assimilate that and get closure on it to my satisfaction, meaning I will know as a tutor when you have rudimentary closure on it and you're no longer making uh, newbie mistakes. You're able to see your mistakes because that's huge, folks. That's huge. Once you can see your mistakes after you make them and then fix them yourself, you're, you're on the road. You're almost there. <clears throat> what will happen with a lot of people is that if we're doing a class or something, they'll say, if I say, Syntax that sentence. And they go to syntax and they'll like ask questions like, well, would this be an adverb then? And I'll say, you're the one that's doing it, not me. You got to tell me. You got to explain it to me. And develop that type of mentality. Now you have begun to build a foundation for yourself of correct grammar that you can build on so that you can be your own boss. You can be autonomous and be a steward of your contracts, whether it's in the fiction or in the fact. And then you don't need me anymore. I don't have anything to do with you anymore. I mean, we can perhaps, you know, if we have a trust count and things like that, we can maintain a friendship. Of course, I'm always going to be there to help people with the correct volition if they need help down the road, help guide them, to the best of my ability and knowledge and skill. But they don't have to keep coming to me or feel like they need to be in contact with me to use this. I know that feeling, folks. I do. I've made no secret that back in 2017, I was taking Mark C Lowercase K. Kishon's Christopher's classes when I was a beginner, when I didn't know anything about grammar. He was the only one in the public that was giving classes, that was not giving classes. He was... Uh, offering classes for a fee. And when I joined the classes, the sensation that I got was that I was going to be missing out if I didn't get to next week's class. I was missing out if I wasn't in his group. Like I, I, I needed to know what he knew. It was that type of... Uh, I guess, aura that was created, that type of atmosphere. And so I felt like I had to keep sending money for a while because I wanted to be a part of this group. I wanted to be in the in crowd, so to speak, be on the cutting edge of what was going on. And what I'd started doing in the classes, you know, there was about, I don't know, 25 to 30 people there. I started looking to see people who had successes and who didn't. And I can tell you, only one or two people had success. And actually, some folks from those old classes back in 2017 ended up in prison trying to do what Mark told them to do. And then when they went to Mark for help, he wouldn't help them. He would say something like, well, there's no helping stupidity, meaning it's their fault that they did what he told them to do. That was his excuse, that they didn't know. So their ignorance got them in trouble. They shouldn't have did it. But yet he was encouraging people to, to do the very things that were getting people put in prison. I had people calling me up crying. Well, anyways, I'm, I'm not going to even go into that. But I started seeing that, okay, success rate, not high. So I started looking at other things, especially since I realized, even though I didn't know the grammar, I realized Mark couldn't teach it to me. The only thing Mark really gave to me as far as the grammar goes is the, the mechanics of how to parse a word. 
And even then, when he was conveying that, I always wondered, you know, why did he settle on that meaning? When there's lots of meanings, why did he choose that one? And I found out it was completely arbitrary. He chose the one that fit his bias, that served his ends, his needs, his purposes. That's when Raven and I, my tutor, Colin Raven, hyphen Farhad, hyphen Tahiti, colon Afarin, that's when we came up with the idea of the earliest nativity root meaning of a word particle, as far as the context of syntax and a word being tangible or non-tangible contract. But that came later. That came later when I began teaching. But I don't cultivate that feeling. At least I hope I don't cultivate that feeling or that sensation that someone needs to pay money to stay ahead of the curve or be included in a group or a community or whatever. Folks, if you're here, you're part of a community. If you're studying, you got a thousand videos or so to study here for free. You don't have to pay for anything if you don't want to. Remember, what you put in is what you get out. If you put study time in here on this YouTube channel, you're definitely going to get something out of it if you're consistent with it. Now, if you want to intensify your study, if you want to go further faster, then you have the option to apply for a workshop and email me using your full correct name. You have that option. But it is an option. There are choices here. Contract is by consent. You don't have to do that to be included in this community. I just ask that you follow the community guidelines, <laughs> which I know is a huge ask for most people. Most people just come in and do whatever they want to do without even bothering to look at the community guidelines. Yes, North America, I'm talking to you. But you can be part of this community. You just got to participate and study. Stay on top of it. Be consistent. And one of those, the things that will help you to be successful in using this technology, if you ever reach the point where you have the closure to do so, you have to be able to articulate it, communicate it, communication. And part of that is flag protocol, which I started out talking about. And then I kind of, as usual, went off the rails here. But I did convey, I think, the most important parts of flag protocol. It's a communication tool. It's the same thing with folks. Okay, let's, let's put it into a fashion sense. The way people dress conveys something. It communicates something about them. Especially if they're purposely dressing a certain way. Someone who dyes their hair pink or purple or blue is communing, communicating something to the rest of their fellow mankind. If someone puts piercings in their nose, in their ears, in their cheeks, in their eyelids or whatever else, they're communicating something to their fellow human beings. If someone gets tattoos, they're communicating something. The way they dress, their clothes. If they're wearing pajamas and slippers to Walmart, they're communicating something. If someone, in, on the other hand, is wearing dress shoes and a three-piece suit to Walmart, they're also communicating something. It's, it's, you know, if someone wears a hat at the dinner table while they're eating in a restaurant, that's communicating something. All right. <laughs> if someone pees on your porch, that's communicating something. Everything is communicating something at every second of every day. That's why me personally, I am hyper, hyper aware of my surroundings, looking at folks, looking at how they're moving, how they're acting, their motions, their tone of voice, and the way they're dressed. Because it's all communication. All of it. And I must admit, I used to stop for a second when I would see a 1 by 1.9 flag on, on something like a truck or a car. But I usually find that, oh, well, they're just doing that because they're using it as the flag of the past tense United States, which there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But some folks use it for correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, but that's the importance of 
credentialing the flag, give the, giving the flag closure when you use it. Very important. On a document contract, postal vessel court venue, just like you would give closure to your abbreviations and so on and so forth. Hope this was helpful. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.